Coming up on today's Code Man Daily, we are talking all sorts of sports. It is so much going on. AFL, NRL, MLB for me. Stats guy, what are you looking at? Yeah, the year of Sabalenka in the tennis and an NRL same game multi. Nice one. How about you, Alex? Digging deeper into tonight's Swans and St Kilda game and then an NRL bet tomorrow night in Canberra. Love it. We've got Rate My Multi. We've got Player Props. We've got Game Picks. We've got Best Bets. It's all going on. It's all in Code Bear Daily. It's really good. Check it out. Welcome to Code Bear Daily. It is Thursday, June 8th. All day. It really is not a word of a lie. This is episode 127 of this here Shemozzle. I am your host, James Clements. I'm the editor of a very good website. You might have heard of it. It's called Code Bet. It's found at codebet.com.au in a surprise twist. And this is Code Bet Daily. I'm joined, as always, by the pontiffs of punting. We've got the very, very pink accoutrements <laughs> of uh, one Alex Donnelly, uh, Junior Executive Vice President of Content Creation. Yep. Code Bet, what's going on, Alex? Oh, no, a lot feeling good Thursday. Thursday night footy's back. Can't wait to yell at my TV in, what, approximately sort of nine hours. And my poor girlfriend is going to be like, oh, you're going to be in a great mood tonight, aren't you? I'm like, yep, it's going to be fun. <laughs> yes, because you definitely need an excuse to start yelling. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, that's not going to be good. And over there, we have the stats guy. What's going on, stats guy? We do. I'm still pumped from the cricket. Who needs basketball when you've got Trav ball in the uh, test cricket? So. Who would have thought <laughs> dropping Travis head was a bad idea? Yeah, absolutely awesome. So happy with that. I did love David Warner's direct ripose to all of the Alex Donnelly hate. Uh, yep, yes. Oh, I, I had, had a bit of hate on him too, so <laughs> good on him. Not I, but at the same time, like I, all I wanted was him to actually go out and play pretty well, and he was not bad. Yeah, it looked at very settled. I one of my favorite things uh, with some of those cricket broadcasters when they literally just do the side on what this is where they're taking the ball. Yeah, and this is where you know the other batsman is taking the ball. It's like wow, this is actually informative, interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Justin Langer though is as oh. bland as bland comes. Like he oh. had a crack at Usman Khawaja for wearing long sleeves. Like I'm sorry, the guy doesn't want to get sunburnt. My bad. <laughs> yeah. uh, Yes, Justin Langer, a.k.a. Shocking, yeah. the world's most boring commentator in the history of commentary. Uh, he and Hados have apparently just gone, well, we're going to be two of the world's worst commentators, <laughs> two of the greatest opening batsmen in the history of cricket. Yeah. yeah. Hados both. Is, is absolutely remarkably he horrible. He yells into the microphone when he talks. Like, yeah. hey, guys, this is happening. It's like, hey. <laughs> Ados, just relax. Didn't know Ados was on the podcast. <laughs> That's pretty chill. Cool. He's chill, mate. <laughs> he's like a fish. It's like, hey, Ados, we need to- he's not a fish. He's a man at first. <laughs> <laughs> but look at him do the thing. It's like, yes, hey, Ados. Oh, he smacked it for four. <laughs> yes, Matthew, he hit it beautifully through the covers for four. Hey, Ados, bring it back. Bring it down about 87 notches. Don't mind the excitement, but just a little bit back. Can we just get uh, – and, and then the problem is Channel 9 have the ashes, which – is Mark Taylor I, and Ian Healy. My point being, That's at least they are yeah. uh, polished, whereas Hados and Langer, it's like... Yeah, it's I like, like them better than... Yeah, basically, if you put, like, your drunk uncle in the comments, <laughs> like, what is he doing <laughs> over here, Kuma? Oh, back in my day. Kuma, when he does this, like, what do you reckon that means? Oh, God, here we go. Anyway, this is Code Complain Daily. I mean, Code Bet Daily. Code Travis you. Daily. Yes. Code Head Daily? No, <laughs> no. I actually thought about it. I was like, surely not. Yep, somehow we did it. Why not? <laughs> uh, player props, game picks, and best bets. So we, that's what we do here on Code Bed Daily. Uh, we also complain about cricket commentary, apparently. Yeah. Uh, but Can today, I complain about AFL commentary too? I'll do that. Yeah, you, you, that, you, you're breaking new ground there. Yeah, well, right. Yeah. <laughs> We've definitely done that before. <laughs> uh, roaming stats guy at the, at the uh, Super Bowl party should have been a bigger hit than it was, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> Game picks, best bets. What are we looking at today? I've got, obviously, we've got a big weekend of footy starting today, and that includes the NRL. So I'm going to do AFL, NRL, and a bit of baseball. Just one more uh, little baseball thing that's popped off just every so often. You just sort of swing in, check out the odds. You look into the stats. You dig into it just that little bit and you go, oh, yeah, I don't mind this one. Let's go. So um, that's what I'll be looking at today because the NBA Finals Game 3 is going to start in about an hour from when we're taping this one. So... Uh, we'll know more about that, and I'll have game four breakdowns for Saturday morning's game, I believe it'll be, on tomorrow's show. Uh, stats guy, what are you looking at in this one? Yeah, a bit of AFL that I didn't cover, uh, French Open tennis, and an NRL same game multi, just a simple one to wrap it all up. Nice one. And what about you there, Donnelly? Yeah, having a look at tonight's game, just a little bit deeper, and then I've got an NRL bet for tomorrow night. What do you mean deeper? You spent about 27 minutes doing it. <laughs> yeah, no, no I, still, I still found a way. No, I found, I found more stuff this morning when I was just uh, – Skirmishing through the internet. Our <laughs> weekly AFL yeah, show, everything. 
It should have been called Code Bet Daily Weekly Sydney AFL Show yesterday. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it, it made up for last week where you spoke about Carlton for 30 minutes as well. <laughs> yeah. 36. Let's let's just be honest. Uh, right. Number one, player props. I've just got a couple of dog kickers that I really, really dug. I mentioned Harry McFive, a.k.a. Harry Mackay against Essendon. Uh, he's got three plus against the Bombers in his last two. Three plus in this one, $3.20. I just like it. I think I'm the oh, SPG. Harry McThree, look, got his confidence back a little bit last week. Uh, the one that he snapped in from the boundary that sort of only just snuck in, you're like, oh, God. But he's just like, I did it. I kicked it. <laughs> oh, and off he went. And everyone was like, "Ah!" Oh, and then they nice. put the camera on his mum eighty-seven thousand times. They did. AFL broadcasts don't have a giant amount to pick from, apparently. But there you go. We'll go to Harry's mum. We don't have the celebrities in the front row like uh, the NBA and things oh. like that. <laughs> so, there's Denzel, and it's like cut to the AFL. It's like it's, there's Harry's mum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's Liver's dad again. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, in the NBA back in, I think it was the 2008 finals, all they did was show Ray Allen's mum over and over. And over. <laughs> really? <laughs> it was pretty weird. It just got, it got very weird. You're like, yes, it, it's Ray Allen's mum. <laughs> it must yeah. be like Ray Allen's mum. <laughs> We're not going to do this for seven games. Like we did it for seven games. <laughs> That's so weird. Right. Jeez. Anyway, just showing my age there, just remembering, uh, you know, the nascent days of uh, office streaming while everybody's you know, crashed around one laptop watching the NBA. Yeah, wasn't crazy, yeah, yeah. Anyway, but the other two, like we touched on these ones really quickly yesterday. Fogarty and Tex uh, for the Crows taking oh, yeah. on Hawthorne, right? And West the Coast. Price, it's West Coast, sorry, yeah. It was uh, the Minnows, yes. Because Adelaide obviously struggled to put away Hawthorne in Tassie. Nearly lost that game. They've only won one ga- game away from Adelaide this year. This is it. Yeah, that's crazy. At home against West Coast, however, and Tex and Fogarty, I think, from what we saw of them against Brisbane a couple of weeks ago at home, again, like they just get up and about this Crows team. That crowd goes absolutely bonkers. It's game um, 250 for Tex. It's going to be a massive one. So I think Tex goes for four plus. Like he has been awesome this year. Like when they've looked good at the Adelaide Oval, it's because he's flying around just clunking absolutely everything. And then you sort of spread it out to the wings and it's like, oh, well, there's Fogarty just like, you know, 35 metres out in the pocket, just on a lead, bang, he's got it. Um, so four plus for both. Actually, I really dig. 255 for Tex and 290 for Fogarty. It's not great, it's value, value, wow. but at the same time, like this West Coast team, they just had the absolute wood put on them last week by Port. Yeah. And I think it's going to happen again by another Adelaide team this time. The Crows. So I'm loving those four plus for both of those. Uh, Rankin was one that we really briefly touched on as well. Three plus for him. I looked at that. It's like $2.50. Not bad as well. I feel like there's plenty of space for him to sort of slip through the cracks and uh, easily get to three. So there's three big goal kickers. I think there's going to be a big, big total put on the West. Yeah, I agree. Especially at Adelaide. Yep. Because, I mean, we saw Adelaide, like, in that Brisbane game, they could score pretty much at will. It felt like at times, like, the way that they were just streaming out of that midfield, I think we'll see it again. Like against West Coast, yeesh. Just remember probably that my first quarter team. they had against Carlson. That, that's the one. They kicked nine yeah. goals or something. Just they're like, probably the oh, best team to over. watch when they're at home. They're probably the best team to watch. I, Absolutely. Opinion, yeah. Flying about. All right, player props for you, Donnelly. Alex, what do you got? Yeah, having a look tonight. Swans and Saints. Uh, Tom Papley, we talked about him in that better multi to kick two goals, but just digging a bit deeper into his stats, he's had 16 goals in 10 games against the Saints. But just going back his last couple of games, he did nothing against North Melbourne. He had like six possessions, and he only popped up with one goal against Carlton. Uh, look, he started off the season in really great form. He had uh, 14 goals in five games, and he's only kicked six then. But you sort of look at the matchups for tonight. Game 350 for Buddy. He's going to be up and about also. He's fresh off the bye. If he gets Josh Battle, who's taller than him, he's going to be too quick for Josh Battle. If he gets Wanganin Malira, he's just going to be uh, he's just going to outsmart him there. But then I also wouldn't be shocked if uh, Longmire throws him in the midfield as he has done a few times this year, just for some explosiveness because it's just it's almost the Jeremy Cameron. It's like, oh, there's the ball. I'm going to go get it. I'm going to kick it. So uh, 15 plus disposals is $1.87. He's had that a couple of times this year. And I don't mind the $1.70 for him to kick two or more goals as well. Just think that it works out well. And then another Sydney player who's very reliable is Will Haywood. He's got 12 goals in seven games against St Kilda. 12 goals this season, uh, and he's kicked at least one in his last four versus St Kilda. You know, he's sort of like what we said for Traka last week. <laughs> Who took that mark 40 minutes out? Oh, it's, oh, it's Hayward. Oh, okay, he, that's he always a, gets one, yeah. Yeah, that's a goal. Uh, or just see, he crashes a pack and just gets front and centre, snap over the shoulder, a buck fifty anytime, or $3.40 for two plus. I don't mind either of those plays. 
Will Hayward is like 100%. Who's that guy? Oh, it's Will Hayward again. Yeah, like, yeah. Once a game. It's him and Ollie Florent are the same person. I am absolutely convinced. <laughs> Like literally, you called it out perfectly. Like it's forty meters out. It's like he's sort of snuck in, like through a gap, and it's like a fifteen meter pass from like one of the wings into the middle, and he's just like, "Oh, oh. who took that?" Ah, Haywood. Oh, he goes <laughs> back, nails it every time. You're like, "Yep, love me a bit, Haywood. Good stuff." Uh, stats guy, what about you? I'm looking at the same game in the AFL. A bit of uh, Brad Crouch. Uh, a lot of people have uh, questioned his impact and efficiency for the Saints. Yeah, but- he has none. Yeah, he doesn't have many, but he's averaging twenty six to so- Alex on our side. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> In today's breakdown. So, yeah. yeah, he doesn't have yeah, much, but he get, racks up the stats and I don't mind him for an AFL fantasy bet. It's averaging 26 disposals, 12 contested and six clearances a game, which on paper looks really good. But as I just said, he doesn't make that influence in the game as much. But these stats have helped him to average 99 AFL fantasy points this season. And he's had seven games this year where he cleared the 110 point uh, AFL fantasy mark. So it baffles me that he's averaging that 99. He's got 110 seven times and he's paying $2.05 to get 100 plus AFL fantasy. Uh, I don't think, yeah, he's not good enough to get tagged. Uh, Saints have Steel and a few other guys that could yeah, get tagged or a bit more influence on the game. Yeah, you don't tag Brad Crouch. Crouch. No, Crouch is still going to get his 25 touches and he's going to get it like six to six to eight clearances a game, which will easily clear that 100 plus AFL fantasy. I think he's going to get plenty of the pill again here and I was surprised it's $2.05 for yeah someone averaging 99 and he's only get. Scores have only gone up and up. He also had 131 uh, two games ago against uh, Sydney as well. Last he's he's so, the type of guy that has 17 possess- uh, seventeen handballs and 10 kicks and you're like, oh, yeah, cool. Yeah. Like just looking at his stats quickly, he's had 109 handballs and uh, 89 kicks against yeah, the Storm crazy. for an average of like <laughs> just bang on 25 a game. Just like, yeah. I never remember him doing anything against this ones ever. Yeah, the other, the other thing is uh, in Supercoach, they count disposal efficiency, but in AFL Fantasy, they don't. So Crouch oh, is not the, okay. most, yep. it's not the most efficient disposal uh, giver as well. So don't worry about that. He'll still clear the 100 plus. So, yeah, he gets definitely more points in AFL Fantasy than Supercoach. So 100 plus, I don't mind it. Nice one. Reminds me of, uh, I'm going to check my Supercoach. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, me too, yes. actually. Yeah. It's an easy week this week for the bio because most there's more, more games. It's only like yep. Gold Coast and someone else not playing. Yeah. Game picks, magic picks, whatever you feel like, game based bets. Uh, I've got three. I think uh, we've done this before where I've just gone, here's a, a over under multi, or at least an over under sort of vibe. I'm going to go the overs in three big games. Uh, well, we've got Gold Coast West tonight, Bulldogs Port tomorrow night, and in between, your tasty little Mets Atlanta game, the Mets Ooh. Braves, so NL West. Uh, sorry, NL East showdown between the two storied rivals. Um, okay, cancelled that game. Have you have you seen all the things in New York? The Canadian, well, yeah, the fires. This is stuff. actually in Atlanta, so. Oh, uh, there you go. <laughs> I think they that should be all right. So, <laughs> uh, I actually have, so having gone through Atlanta a couple of times, you actually go past the old ballpark when you sort of drive in from the airport, which oh, is kind cool. of neat. It's like yeah. the old, uh, old Brave Stadium. Pretty cool, pretty fun, pretty neat. Uh, nice. But either way, Mets Atlanta. The over under for runs in that game is eight and a half. Uh, the Mets have had their last two games go for 10 plus, and so have the Braves. They play wow. today, obviously, because this is, you know, part of the series, but this is tomorrow's game. Um, Atlanta at home as well. Don't mind just absolutely belting it. They've gone 19 and 10. Uh, for the totals going over so far this season. Wow. And the Mets away, 16, 15, and three as well. So plenty of runs scored in those games. The Mets aren't very good. <laughs> like <they're, laughs> I think they're, what, 30 and 31. So they're just under 500. But Atlanta are flying, 36 and 24. Uh, they were one of my picks uh, before the season for the World Series. So feeling pretty good about that at the moment. In terms of the run line, though, I want to sort of steer clear of that. So I'm just going to go with the over under, the eight and a half. Just give me runs. Just give me some runs. The Mets. Have plenty, plenty of power. Atlanta very clearly do. The pitching matchup, look, I just think we're still going to see plenty there in Atlanta. It's going to be fun. Bulldogs Port over 163 and a half. Break this down on the AFL show. I think the last five games of Marvel have all gone over, including even the Dogs last week against Geelong. You look at Bull, at the Bulldogs and go, well, they're not going to kick enough scores for teams to like have the overs go. And nah, Port are going to put one on them. Port oh, could, yeah. And the Bulldogs, <laughs> look, they'll do their usual thing where they score 70. But Port will score 90. And I'll just yell about <laughs> yeah. it again. <laughs> yeah. And they'll get up to about 100, I reckon, for Port. And I reckon we'll see about 105, 75 in this one. Perfect. And that'll send you over. And then tonight in the NRL, Gold Coast West 
Over Yo. 45.5. What do these two teams do, Alex? Suck at defending. That's exactly <laughs> right. We're going over in this one in a heartbeat. So uh, that'll get you around $6 with the uh, multi. $6, so, oh, wow. Because so, it's your over-unders. So uh, it lands around just under the six. And I kind of like each of them because Mets Atlanta should – Clear that one pretty easily. Well, we've got a pretty tr- handy track record of this Mets team. I mean, they literally played yesterday and I went for 10 runs in that game as well. So off we go. Um, awesome. I'll talk about the actual results of those in the next bit. But there you go. Nice little multi there. Alex, how are you feeling for match and game picks? Easy. Sticking with tonight. Swans and Saints. Swans the lead at quarter time in this one. Uh, Swans have led at quarter time in 10 of their last 11 at the SCG. GWS earlier this season was the one that they didn't. Overall this season, they've led in 7 of 11 at quarter time, which is you know weird to think about given their record this year. Last season, they were 14 of 26 at quarter time as well. Then you dig in a bit deeper against St Kilda. They've led a quarter time in their last six straight against uh, the Saints at the SCG and 10 of 14 overall. I'll take the dollar seventy. Thank you very much. Swans to hit the ground running in Buddy 350. Good nice. stuff. That's a really good one. Uh, how about you there, Stats Guy? What are you looking at? Yeah, the French Open, the women's semi final. Uh, the French Open's been a bit of a roller coaster in terms of betting and results and things like that. But I'm going back to old reliable Sabalenka, who were on in uh, the Australian Open. Uh, she's taking on Carolina Mukova, uh, who's been awesome, uh, even ranked uh, 43 in the world, but she's still in the semi final here. But 2023 is the year of Sabalenka. She's got three titles, 34 and 5 since the start of the year, and an amazing 14 and 2 on clay since the start of the year. So she's been absolutely on fire. Is she's- the is the year of Sabalenka the same as the summer of George or not? Summer of George, yeah. That <laughs> <laughs> just started, actually. The summer, the summer of, of punk, that's what it is. <laughs> Wrestling. Yeah, I think yeah, pretty much the same. They'll make an episode about it, I reckon. Uh, yeah, Sabalenka's a great player to bet on any tournament. She's clearly the most powerful hitter on the women's tour. Uh, Serena Williams did that for decades where she was just the most powerful hitter and she was winning all the tournaments. Sabalenka is now doing that herself. Uh, she's l- yet to lose a set in all five matches this tournament, which is unbelievable uh, coming against some of the best players in the world. And uh, she won in straight sets the last time she played Mukova. So I'm just going to take Sabalenka in straight sets to continue her great run. Uh, two zero in the sets at a dollar eighty three on bet three six five. Uh, she's a lot more experienced, Sabalenka, in these big games. It's only Mukova's second ever semi final. I think she can absolutely clean her up here. So get on Sabalenka. That's a good one. I do like the uh, the year of Sabalenka. Yes, year of she's Sab- she's been awesome. Sab it up. We are a Sabalenka podcast. That's all. <laughs> absolutely, are. absolutely. All behind it. All right, best bets for today, tomorrow, whenever. So I promised some of those results from the uh, games that I was talking about. Atlanta will beat the Mets. Yep. Uh, give me that. The dollar sixty favorites, and you know that feels pretty bang on. Uh, so Atlanta with the win and the over eight and a half, because uh, there's no run line at the moment. That's fine. As I've said, I'm going to steer clear of the run lines for that because Atlanta, weirdly enough, haven't covered in a lot of these weird games. They're actually one of the worst <laughs> worst teams wow. in the MLB at covering uh, the run lines. They're in fact thirtieth, so second last. Hmm. Uh, third last. Even though they so, win, yeah. Which is pretty crazy. Well, I think that's at home as well. So eight and twenty-two at home. Yeah. The weird part is the Mets are twelve and twenty-two away. So they're thirtieth as well. So it's like basically <laughs> just best of luck. Who's going to suck at least at trying to go <laughs> online? I'm just going to go the Braves head to head and the over. Uh, Port at the line tomorrow, tomorrow night, Friday night footy. And the over, 164 and a half. Love that. And then on, I believe, uh, I think it's Saturday, we've got Souths and Dragons in the NRL. Nice. The Dragons stink. Yep. They stink. It stinks. I'm taking Souths and the over, 45.5, because the Rabbitohs will put an absolute hurting on the Dragons. Now, if you were to combine all of those stats, Guy. Here we go. Rate my multi. $38.09 for the Atlanta Braves to beat the New York Mets over eight and a half runs. 38. Port Adelaide Power. Boom. At the line, minus six and a half over the dogs on Friday night footy and over 164.5 total points in that game. And the South Sydney Rabbitohs to beat the St. George Illawarra Dragons. I think that was actually at the line as well. That was an at the line bet. So that's minus six and a half for the Rabbitohs and the over 45.5 points. Rate my multi, gentlemen. It's $38 and $38. Six legs, you little ripper. Rate that, it. Go. go that, that really sh- I'm going to give that an eight because I can't believe that that's uh, 
So high odds. I'm okay. going a six because my worry is the over in the port game because the Western Bulldogs won't hold up their end of the deal. <laughs> <That's> yeah. just- <laughs> yeah. Come on. No, I'll back it. I'll back it. Nice one. All right. Thanks for nothing, Alex Donnelly. Just his hatred of the Bulldogs just colours everything. <laughs> well, no, their, their inability to get over 80 is what concerns yeah. me. But like James said, if they if Port get 100, then you're laughing. Yeah. Well, it's, they just need know. to get their usual 75 and Port will kick 120 on them or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll they see how we go. 120, but I still reckon they uh, at least give that 100 a nudge. So there you go. $38.09, I think we got to. Nice. Uh, love that multi. Enjoy that. But I also really like all those picks. So the Port, the over, South of the line and the over and Atlanta in the over two. Awesome. Uh, right. How about you there, Alex, with your best bet? Raiders and Warriors tomorrow night in Canberra. Uh, Phil and I are on the Raiders uh, between $5.50 and $7 for them to make the top four. So we are really riding the Raiders oh, hard, oh, wow. even though they are taking on one of our favourite teams, uh, the New Zealand Warriors. But look, it's Jared Croak's 300th game at home. They wested, rested him against the West Tigers last week so he could play his 300th at home. Fair enough. Uh, but then you also look, the Raiders have covered in their last five night games against the Warriors. <laughs> Warriors have had a tough couple of weeks, even though they've been at home. They're going to come across to Canberra. Insane atmosphere for Crocus 300th. The Raiders will be too good. They'll cover. It's a four and a half line at $1.92, so it's less than a converted try. I'm pretty happy to take that. It's a good one. The Warriors, look, they did uh, take care of the Dolphins last week, right? Mm -hmm. At home. Um, Weird sort of hiccup against the, like, minnow. Everybody's missing Broncos the week before, which is kind of strange. but. Yeah, the travel in Canberra. Can they do it on a freezing cold Friday night in Canberra? <laughs> I mean, they're probably used to freezing cold nights in at Mount Smart Stadium. So yeah, true. Yeah, <laughs> very probably. true. Uh, but yeah, that's a weird one. I I think I trust the Raiders' offense a little bit more, right? Yeah, nice. Uh, good stuff, Liam. What about you for your best bet? Yeah, just a simple same game multi for the Manly Sea Eagles versus Dolphins game. I was surprised that Dolphins are heavy underdogs in this one, considering it's eighth versus tenth on the ladder with Dolphins at eighth. Uh, Dolphins at plus eight and a half is first leg of my multi. Uh, Manly have won only one of their last five. They do get some star players like Turbo and Cherry Evans back this week, I just saw. But uh, I think the Dolphins can yeah still at least cover that line. Manly might win, but yeah, go to the Dolphins. They are the best team in the league at covering the line this year at nine and four. And they have covered the line in four of their six away games this year. So oh. don't mind the Dolphins to keep this one close. They've beat Dolphins have beaten the Sharks, Raiders, and Roosters. And I think, yeah, their quality in attack can at least keep this close. Uh, and then their second leg is Jermaine Asako, any time try scorer. The Kiwi winger is the second most tries in the league with 13 in 13 games. Uh, he's got five tries in his last uh, three games alone. And his fitness and uh can dominate in both halves. He's got five games this year with two or more tries. He's two dollars thirty just for an anytime try scorer, which is insane for the second most tries in the league. So you can have a look at that if you want as a player prop. But then just putting Dolphins plus eight and a half and Asako to score a try is a two leg multi at three dollars sixty one on Labyrinth. Ooh. Ooh, which I was really surprised about. Usually your leading try scorer is yeah a lot less than that. So yeah, get on it. Yeah, two dollars thirty for. Yeah, it feels like that. It'd usually be like a dollar ninety if it was like Sevo or, or. Yeah, uh, I think it's because Sea Eagles are a heavy favourite in this one. But I was surprised that the odds are so swayed in their favour. They have they've been pretty average this year themselves. Don't mind it. Good stuff. Rate my multi there. I'll give that a ten. <laughs> oh, nice. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Simple. Uh, right there we go. Who's your tip for the French Open here, stats guy? For the entire thing, or. Oh, I got to go Alcaraz now. My man Runa went out, so I'll go Alcaraz. And then, yeah, Sabalenka. She's the only seeded player left. You got to take Sabalenka. And uh, Alcaraz demolished your mate Sitsipas. So. He did. Yeah, oh, oh, that was the first. Absolutely uh, whipped him. Yeah, that was the first quarterfinal Sitsipas has ever lost. So yeah, it was no good. Tough scenes. Tough scenes. All right, there you go. That's it. Coming bit daily for today. We'll be back on deck tomorrow, probably to complain some more about the cricket. Uh, <laughs> we'll. Either way, you can get right around the show. We've got the AFL show, which is up now for this week because we do have Thursday night footy. So we have taped that on a Wednesday. A little bit dicey without teams being named, but still. Yeah, talking right. about Clayton Oliver, who's in hospital on an IV drip. That was great. <laughs> so I'll see what happens in some of those. Ah. Uh, but that's the thing with the Thursday night footy. And then the, uh, so we'll have our NRL show up, go, NRL show go up later today as well with mm-hmm. uh, Alex and Phil, which would be gnarly. So you can subscribe and follow those separate shows on Spotify and other specific apps. But if you're just, you know, looking out for those, they should just be in your main feed as well. Uh, Like, review, and star all of them, would you? And uh, check us a follow across all the socials, YouTube, basically, IG, Twitter, TikTok, Twitch. As mentioned, we're working on getting AFL 23 to sponsor a 24-hour AFL 23 challenge. 
with stats guy Leo and Marcus all involved should be uh, good. Be Send him Marcus in. in. Yeah, I reckon Marcus. He's got that dog in him. I don't know. If <laughs> yeah, I got the dog. I don't um, even want to play. <laughs> Stats guy, the, the fact that Stats guy keeps saying he doesn't want to play it makes us want to do it more. Oh, I, I would if it was for work, for sure. All right. Send any questions, any comments via the socials or whatever. Uh, and I think that's it. Good stuff. Uh, thanks, Stats guy. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, cheers. Uh, let's go Denver today as well before this game starts. Tell you what, I've got uh, the line actually moved on that one. I don't know if I mentioned this, but it moved out to three and a half from two and a half and actually started around two. Uh, which is pretty crazy. You don't see finals games move lines no. that dramatically usually. Uh, it's especially hard to pick this game, game. That's why. Chaos games going to be crazy. Can't wait. Either way, uh, thanks as always to Gerald for producing and uh, thanks to me for wearing my Miami hat in a vain attempt to put the mocks on uh, the heat. <laughs> 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 All right. What do we say, Stats Guy? Gamble responsibly. All right, may all your picks come in. Happy punting. We'll catch you tomorrow after Thursday night footy. Go Bet Daily. Go Swans. What are you really gambling with? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.